Good afternoon. Today is Friday, January 15th, 2016. We are here today to interview Governor A. Linwood Holton, former governor of Virginia, who made George Mason College independent from the University of Virginia in 1972, among many other important achievements during his governorship. My name is Emily Curley, and Robert Bay is assisting. We are conducting this interview on behalf of the George Mason University Oral History Program. Our interview is taking place at Governor Holton's home in Irvington, Virginia. So thank you so much for meeting with us today. Um, so to begin, can, can you tell me how, when, and why you got into the Virginia political scene? That's something that apparently I was born with because uh, from a very early stage I was interested in politics in Virginia. And uh, from my earliest days of memory, I assumed that I was going to be active in the political world of Virginia. I was determined to break up the bird machine, which had dominated politics in Virginia for at least one generation. And if you, if you include the part of the machine that preceded Harry Byrd Sr., you get at least two generations of one faction of one party dominating the political affairs of Virginia. And I was determined to break it up. The uh, approach that I used was to uh, try, it's not, wasn't a question of rehab, recreate it just did, the Republican Party didn't exist in Virginia really they were nominally some but it, it wasn't a party they didn't run candidates on a serious basis and uh, yet I, I used it uh, because it was very popular nationally at the time Eisenhower was in the offing, he had not yet identified with the Republican Party when I started, but uh, he was very popular and it was very obvious that he was probably going to be identified. And that would be a help nationally to create interest in a Republican organization in the state of Virginia. So I tried to use that national uh, natural resource to create a Republican Party on a statewide basis. And uh, when the time came to decide what to do and where to go for making a living and having a career as an adult, I picked Roanoke as being a very logical place for the creation of a base for the Republican Party. Roanoke was a relatively new city. It was not burdened with uh, a long time democratic heritage. And uh, it had a lot of people from out of state that already lived there that were willing to take a look at the political picture on an impartial basis. And so I made the decision that I would come to Roanoke to practice law and also activate myself in the political picture. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so in your book, um, Opportunity Time, you mentioned the relationship of the bird machine to your own political career. Uh, could you briefly describe the nature of the bird machine and its effects on Virginia with respect to politics the economy, services, uh, infrastructure, and education? <laughs> well, the, uh, the bird machine dominated the political activities of Virginia, on, particularly on a statewide basis. They had begun to slip on a national basis. Uh, Virginia was, uh, well, the bird organization never really got into politics on a national basis very much. They, they ignored the presidential elections and realized that the 
people in Virginia were probably going to be uh, interested in re being Republican nationally, electing Republican candidates for president, and uh, the Byrd organization just did not get into that. But the Byrd organization, through a series of county organizations, there are five constitutional offices in each county. They're created by the Constitution of Virginia. And those five officers constituted the basic uh, staffing and structure of the Byrd organization. You didn't get to be a Commonwealth attorney or a clerk of the court unless you were a Byrd supporter. And therefore, Byrd organization could go to any county in the state and know that it had an organization to begin with on a statewide basis. And they controlled who got elected to the General Assembly of Virginia. They controlled who was appointed judges to Virginia judgeships and uh, pretty much controlled uh, the election of United States Senators. But uh, as far as economic, uh, that, that just falls along naturally because the uh, structure of the political activity was pretty much fixed and the, the, it was very business friendly and uh, beginning with uh, Governor Harrison, <coughs> who was not so seriously involved in the massive resistance effort, um, he, he, he began to convince the state to stop looking over its shoulder and worrying about racial discrimination and tried to develop economically uh, as a matter of providing jobs for people in Virginia. <clears throat> and that began the turnover from a rural to a, um, a more industrial state. And uh, that, that's about the way the economic developed. It began with Governor Harrison he created the uh, commission for the community college system, and all of that was designed to effectuate a good policy of economic development. So they were in favor of, by that time, they were in favor of, of economic development on a modern basis as opposed to the, the, the rural approach that had been dominant in the years past. The bird machine's effect on education and infrastructure within the state. Well, it, most of the leadership of the, of, of the bird machine didn't believe in education. So salaries were low, kept low to keep the taxes low, and Education was neglected, both at public school level and at higher education. So uh, that was one of the major uh, achievements of when Virginia discarded the bird machine. It, it began to recognize the opportunity in education and began to make serious investments. And we have developed a, a very significant series of four-year institu research institutions that are outstanding. And that's something that would not have happened if the bird machine had continued to dominate the government of Virginia. 